Hello and welcome back to another showcase on Dark Souls Remaster. Sorry for a late delay on this video. I'll try and be more consistent and faster with the future ones. Alright, let's that aside, let's begin. Today's object is the Astora Greatsword. Now, I'll start with the visuals. Visually, well, it's the most pretty plain longsword you can get with a diamond crosscut fuller. But uh, I don't see anything overly significant about it. Its cross handle is pretty plain. Well, decorative, but plain by most standards. The pommel, no different. And it's handled enough to, uh, to accompany two hands, thus making it a longsword. At least in my opinion. That's a bit of more of a debate for other people. <laughs> Moving on to description. A straight sword of an unknown knight, likely one of Astora's superiors. High quality weapon with a powerful blessing. Powerful is subjective. If I'm not mistaken, I think that knight who saved us in the beginning of the game was named Oscar. I may be wrong. Uh, the lore of this game is not my strong point. But lore aside, let's talk about some stats and animation. Now, starting off physically, well, we got 80 physical damage and 80 magical damage. So it's built in magic, which was all right in the beginning of the game. Going on to bonus damage, we got 74 starting physical damage, which isn't all that bad. And magical, not nearly as strong, but still there at plus 35. Going on to the bonus, we got a well, C for strength, a C for dexterity, and a C for faith. A little odd, but no matter. For auxiliary ball effects, we got additional damage against undead creatures. For a bonus of 120. Damage reduction is nothing to be really exciting there. 50 for damage, nothing for magic, only 10. 35 for lightning and fire, and stability is only 32. The requirements to wield this weapon are 10 strength, 10 dexterity, no intelligence, and 14 faith. Their ability is a reasonable 160, and the weight is a nice lofty light 3.0. So most characters can wield this, given maybe their build into faith. It probably needed. Now, the animations for a Astora's straight sword are that of a straight sword. <laughs> so the basic attacks are side swiping. You already know the power attack is going to be the stab and upswing, so nothing newly new there. But no matter, I'll still go over it. It is a fairly balanced animation set, it is useful, it is easy to use, and I find it very comfortable to use. Maybe because that's all I ever, all, all I ever used in Dark Souls. Okay, now the sprint attack is a quick swipe. Rolling attack is up, pretty much an uppercut. So nothing new or impressive there. The attack forward, I like to call it, is the basic kick in this case. And then you got the plunge attack. Nothing new. Think nothing we have already haven't seen before. All right, next up we we'll go for two-handed animations. The basic attack is just pretty much a down her ball. I never got a good word for this. Lunging in the uppercutting. Alright, and then you got the power attack, which is really like the normal attack, except now you're doing it two-handed. Side swiping, simply put. Now on for the last few animations. The sprint attack is the overhead bash. Albeit a bit strange. Just sprinting and attacking with a two-handed weapon. We've never really done it at all. <laughs> Alright, moving on. We got the forward attack, which is the kick. So nothing truly new there. Then you got the roll attack, which is a quick stab. I think I forgot to do that in the single hand version, which would be a swipe. My, my bad if I did forget. But anyway, you've got the guard. Nothing new, nothing great. Let's move on. Now, something I don't normally do is I'll show you where to get this. Now, mind you, I've already picked it up because, ooh, shiny. But if you chose the uh, thief perk, I believe, to get the Glock key, you can go from the, to the valley here, through that cage, and go through the bridge over here. But you can access the film this all fire like shrine, mind you. <laughs> but yes, the uh, item will be right here with a dragon, which I've already picked up. Alright, mine from an embarrassing point that I got two of these for what's probably pretty redundant. Let's upgrade it. Now, you might have noticed this takes Twinkling Taintonite to upgrade. So it doesn't take very many upgrades, but unfortunately means it doesn't take many upgrades. So Twinkling Taintonite is pretty expensive, it's rare. It is reserved for special weapons, which I guess this sort of falls under as a special weapon. Here's what it looks like fully upgraded. Not exactly that impressive. Only 120, so we have 40 damage and 4 physical and magical. 
and the bonus damage not even surpassing. And in Magic's case, I'm catching up. Alright, but enough of that. Let's go on some performance. In a nutshell, well, this weapon is simple to use. Then again, you do get early on in the game. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. But anyway, uh, in the beginning of the game, when you get it, very few enemies will have magic resistance, which is nice. But, uh, keyword being be beginning of the game, or key phrase. Because after the beginning of the game and your opponents start to get stronger, well, mm, best replaces weapon. In my opinion, anyway. Is it terrible? No. no. It's just outclassed by many other weapons. The, the bonus is nothing right, right home about. After hitting a soft cap, it's not all that strong. So of course I can, I can lay out all the enemies here and get through their def defenses, but to what point do that make? But anyway, moving on from that, we'll go through the backstab damage, which I've started incorporating, I believe. <laughs> it goes to show I should make these videos a bit more often and more frequently. <laughs> But the, the backstab, backstab damage being the best example of the damage of its highest output is 300, uh, 438, which isn't all that impressive. Moving on to a bigger enemy, which far more defense. Magic defense? Uh, I guess they're an improvement, just not focusing on magic defense. Alright. So, attacking only doing 73 with a basic slash, this is an example of mm, this weapon's being outclassed. Where I really shouldn't be here using this weapon. <laughs> it's okay, but I think we should all strive for something better than okay in terms of damage output. But no matter, let's move on to the next enemy since it's gonna take forever. Next opponent being the Capra Demon. Well, for the store, a great store. Uh, you would use it in the beginning of the game. You wouldn't be using it at this point unless you're trying to make a point or do some kind of a specific playthrough. The weapon's pretty miserable at this point. That magic damage? doesn't amount to whole blood, as well as the poultry scaling. But uh, kind of beside the point, nothing really unexpected, it is acceptable damage and nothing more. Overall, eh, it was acceptable is the best word for it. It's kind of the running theme of this video. <laughs> but enough of the Capra Demon, let's move on to the humanoid opponent. Alright, and with no other human enemies really from any fight, I have Kirk. And against a humanoid opponent, the damage is the running theme, you can repeat it with me, is acceptable. <laughs> but yeah, again, not really impressed, not let down. It meets my expectations of this weapon. Moving on to the pros and cons of a Stora's straight sword. On the pros end, well, it's a good weapon to have early in the game. It does come with built in with magic damage, which in the beginning of the game, not many enemies have resistance to. It also has uh, divine damage in there. I believe I mentioned that early on. And uh, it's fairly lightweight. So, it's like any other straight sword. Going on to the cons, the uh, scaling damage is not very good long term. It's adequate. And that's really the only real con. But pretty much Rob sums it up. <laughs> okay, going on to score for this uh, straight sword. Damage, I'll give it a B plus, or B minus, sorry. B minus. Early on, good, but not so good later on. Reach, standard straight sword, it's a C. Nothing new or great there. Animation, it does not reinvent the wheel, it sticks to what it knows, a C. Scaling, uh, I'm gonna have to give it a C. That scaling really isn't that great long term. But miscellaneous, I'll give it a B for having. Not only have a magic a magic sword early in the game, having that uh, divine damage. So yeah, overall I give a straight straight sword a C. Good enough early in the game, but toss it aside when you find something better, which won't be too terribly long. <laughs> and so wraps up another showcase. This weapon, I like the look of it. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but I do like the look of it. Don't like how it really it's stats wise, but uh, did I use it at the beginning of my playthrough? No, I didn't. By the time I actually found it, it was became useless to me. <laughs> and that has been Showcase for Tales. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.